There was some interest in a picture I sent out about my static beam lab, so I thought I'd give a few more details to uh, people who might be interested in doing something like this in their class. And so is it really a lab? Well, the students are just working together on some tough uh, statics problems, but they have a physical object in front of them, and with the force sensor, it gives them feedback as to whether they're doing it right, and so I think it is an effective way to get them to get some um, practice solving statics problems, to learn how to apply what they've learned, and it engages them a little bit more than I think just a piece of paper and writing it out or even doing a whiteboard. This would be a, a good thing to also do on whiteboards. Um, so we have a um, couple of pieces of wood with a hinge here, and to prevent the beam from slipping and rotating, we have a uh, string attached to uh, the end, in this case the end, not all of them, and then a uh, force sensor here to measure the tension. And so I first set this up so it is level. Uh, so this first one will be level once I put the weight on it anyway. And students start out by first zeroing the force sensor. When it's in the orientation it's gonna be used, that makes it a little more accurate and then they notice a tension, and then they're asked to predict what will happen if we hang this weight on the inner hook or eyelid here, and most of them are able to predict, hey, the tension's gonna go up. Uh, then they're asked to predict what will happen if I move the weight to this further out one, and if they're just thinking about the sum of the forces, they might think it's the same, but most of them realize, hey, if I move it out there, it has more torque, it's a bigger lever arm about the hinge, and so the tension has to go up in it, and it does. Uh, when they reach this part, now they're tasked with solving for the tension and the force of the hinge on the beam. Uh, some other things to notice, uh, the mass of the board is written on it because they, uh, otherwise they'd have to take it apart to get the mass. And I'm using uh, hardwood. Somebody uh, cleverly noticed it's poplar, uh, but any hardwood that's a little denser is gonna hold up better. Uh, it's a little harder to uh, attach the hooks and things to it, but it'll be sturdier. And also it's denser, so the mass of the beam is significant. Uh, for example, this one is uh, 230 grams. And so that is more than if it was pine or something. Uh, I just have a um, ring stand here and then a clamp. I'll give you more details about the clamp uh, and show you how I set it up uh, next. After the students do this, there's a second part. Notice I have another string here, and it's longer. And so now the beam is not horizontal. Uh, they predict what's gonna happen to the tension. Is it gonna go up or is it gonna go down? And then they solve for it and solve for the hinge force again. Uh, some things to uh, note. Um, there are two things that could change the tension. Uh, one is, well, if we kept it horizontal and the string gets closer to the beam like that, it's not as effective as giving, to at giving torque to hold up the weights. Uh, only the perpendicular component is going to have a torque. So that would make the tension go up as it gets closer to the beam, and that's what happens when you rotate it down. So there's an argument that the tension would go up. However, the weights now are not perpendicular to the lever arm like they were here before, perpendicular to the beam. And so they're not gonna have as much torque, so the string has an easier job. And so that's an argument the tension could go down. It actually depends on the exact situation, whether it goes up or down, there'd be some angle uh, where it would reach a maximum. Uh, and so that's the second part of the lab, a lot more challenging. Uh, students will wanna tilt their coordinate system to be parallel to the beam, I tell, caution them against that, it usually confuses them. And so I tell them keep X horizontal, Y vertical, it makes it easier to interpret what you're doing, but they can do that, it's not a mistake. I'll, t I'll show you a little bit more about the construction next. So here's a close up. On uh, most of the beams I have, either the string is going to the end of the beam, and then the mass is inset a little bit, or the string is going somewhere closer and the mass is on the end. 
And so I do, don't put them both on the end. That'd be one way, way to make it a little easier. It's not that big a deal. Um, and then I have the hinge attached there. Some of the beams are higher up. Uh, they're all different. And so that was sort of my original idea was to uh, have a bunch of beams out and the students would analyze a bunch of them. Uh, that's not a good idea. It's a lot of work just to analyze one. And so instead uh, I have them uh, all different so each group gets different results. Uh, this clamp, uh, I'm sure there are a lot of things that would work with it, but this is what I have and it works really well and I use them for other things. So Irwin quick grip one inch spring clamp. Uh, I'm sure you can find that online. Um, the, and then there's a hook on the top. Uh, sort of the problem with my design is getting this string so that the beam is level. And so I put a level on it and tie a knot so that string is just the right length. And the problem is those strings get in the way for the other teachers that use the force sensors, so they remove them a lot. Uh, and so I have to reattach them, and it's kind of a pain to get them just the right size. A better design, you would have some way to adjust their length so you could tighten them up or loosen them uh, to, as you level the beam, if you want to give a, the students a level one, which I think is a good idea. So there's all kinds of little uh, ideas you could do for that. Uh, I'll leave it up to you, uh, but this is how I do, do it, and it does work.